Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about this uh, interesting paper called as Graph of Thoughts. This paper appeared in AAAI 2024 and has 857 citations as of now. So let's get started. Uh, what is Graph of Thoughts and how does Graph of Thoughts compare with other prompting strategies? Right. So prompt engineering has become so popular and then there are so many prompting strategies. Uh, for example, you could just do vanilla input output or you could actually do chain of thought prompting or you could do multiple chain of thoughts and, you know, apply self consistency to choose the best one. Or you could do tree of thoughts and then you can, of course, also do graph of thoughts as we'll talk in detail in this video. Right. So in the simple input output case, you basically have an input, you pass that to the large language model. You could of course do one shot, few shots, zero shot in context learning, and then you get the output, right? In chain of thought, you know, also called as think step by step kind of a strategy, you give the input to the large language model, it generates an intermediate, you know, a bunch of thoughts, and then finally it comes up with the final output. So this bunch of thoughts is like a chain, as you see, right? In a chain of thought with self consistency, you basically, uh, you know, try to create multiple chains or, or rather, uh, you know, generate multiple chains. Um, and then at the end, at the end state, you essentially try to use an evaluation function so as to identify which of them is the best one. So, of course, you abandon some chains, but you keep the best chain and then you use that uh, to essentially generate the output. In the tree of thought setup, uh, given a particular input, you essentially try to, um, you know, try to generate multiple new thoughts, and you try to do that at every node, uh, thereby tree creating a tree of tree kind of a structure. So you sort of try to represent the LLM reasoning process as a tree, and then you try to evaluate each of those nodes, uh, internal nodes as well as leaf nodes. Uh, you retain uh, those, uh, you know, the most promising ones, and then you try to grow them further. Of course, true, three of thoughts can involve a breadth first search or depth first search kind of scenarios. It also involves this backtracking strategy, which sort of makes tree of thoughts much more expressive compared to chain of thought or chain of thought with self consistency. However, in graph of thoughts, this is generalized even further. So essentially, uh, not just you can do uh, backtracking like entry of thought, but you can also do interesting transformational operations like aggregating, which is not really possible in a tree of thought kind of a scenario. You can also do refining, which is not possible in tree of thought kind of a scenario. And of course, just like tree of thought, you can do splitting of a node at any point of time anyway. So arbitrary uh, graph based thought transformations can be done in graph of thought. That is what makes it much more uh, comprehensive compared to all other prompting strategies. In graph of thought, the vertices, as you can see here, are units of information or LLM thoughts. Now, for example, uh, in, in a creative writing tasks, these uh, nodes could be paragraphs, while in sorting kind of tasks, these could be sequence of numbers. Right. While the edges sort of indicate dependencies, edges basically say uh, that, uh, you know, to be able to generate, let's say, uh, this thought B uh, from thought A, the LLM basically just requires A as input and generates B as the output. Now, you know, why graph of thoughts? It's sort of uh, uh, developed from this thinking, which is written here as well. So, you know, when working on a novel idea, a human essentially um, um, follows, a, follows various chains of thoughts. And that is why you have like chains of thoughts and multiple chains of thoughts kind of things. Um, and uh, you also try to uh, try different separate chains of thoughts and therefore tree of thought made sense. But, uh, you know, human also does a, a complex network of thoughts. So essentially several times, we sort of feel uh, the need for backtracking, need for multiple thoughts, but also at some points, you know, we need uh, a need to ensure that some from some previous chain, we could combine an idea with the currently explored one, and then you could merge them to create a new solution. And that is what gives rise to this thinking of graph of thoughts. Now, how to basically, you know, make sure that you can operationalize this graph of thoughts, uh, graph of thought strategy. What is the broad architecture? So in graph of thought strategy, the broad architecture is is what is shown in the left top figure. Essentially, um, you know, uh, you can represent a graph of thought strategy using a four tuple G T E R. G stands for graph of L M reasoning process. T is the thought transformations that can be done. E is the evaluator, and R is the ranking function. Now we'll go over each of them one by one and try to understand how does it fit in the entire architecture. The architecture basically comprises of four main modules. Um, you know, or maybe five main modules if I were to count uh, the ranking step as well, right? There's a controller which sort of acts as the main, uh, you know, um, main interface to which the user talks to. Uh, 
Uh, there is a prompter, there is a parser, there is a scoring and validator, and then there is an anchor. Right. So, you know, when a user has a query, the user comes to the controller. They basically provide the query, like let's say a sorting task to the controller. Uh, the controller, basically, the goal of the controller is to manage, coordinate, uh, initiate, you know, do everything for the entire G of your uh, in graph of thought process. Um, so the controller, essentially, the user also, uh, I mean, uh, in fact, the prompt engineer or the user. So the prompt engineer basically uh, feeds the controller with a graph of operations. So the graph of operations is basically a static structure in some ways, a directed acyclic graph, uh, where the user basically specifies the graph decomposition of a given task. So for example, on the next slide, I'll show you this graph of operations for a sorting task. Right? It sort of talks about what transformations should be applied to the LLM thoughts uh, together with their order and dependencies so as to essentially accomplish the overall sorting task. Now, of course, the user can come up with different sorting task inputs at different point of time and so on. Okay. So, so this strategy requires a whole bunch of prompt engineering because the graph of operations has to be provided directly a cyclic graph by a prompt engineer. Now, uh, once uh, uh, you know the user provides their task, the graph of operations gets into operation. So you basically try to uh, get functioning. You know, it basically tries to figure out the first operation. Maybe the first operation, uh, you know, there are various possible operations. So, uh, the, uh, for, for example, the first operation could be take uh, a 64 sized list and then you know uh, try to generate uh, four chunks out of it. So now this has to be given to the LLM using a prompter. So the prompter basically provides the current graph reasoning state, state along with the kind of definition of the operation to be done, like generation, and the appropriate prompt for that particular operation. So if generation, aggregation, scoring, keep best out of top K, or rather keep best out of N, uh, you know, um, keep N best out of several, right, or repeat some operation several times, these could be possible operations. Each operation, the prompt engine has to specify the prompt to, uh, to, to be able to do each operation. Now, those prompts are basically used to prompt the LLM along with the inputs, which basically includes the graph reasoning state. What is the graph reasoning state? Well, it's a dynamic structure that maintains the state of the ongoing LLM reasoning process. It sort of maintains the history of the LLM thoughts and also their states. Okay. Now, once you basically prompt the LLM with a particular operation, you get the output of that operation, and then the parser parses those operations. Um, so this prompter guy, of course, you know, tries to take the operations and, uh, you know, prompt the LLM to be able to get the right outputs. The parser guy tries to parse those. Now, in the graph of thoughts, of course, you have to evaluate the quality of each node. How well are the outputs at each node? To be able to do that, you can actually use this scoring and validation module, which uses a human or an LLM or some, uh, you know, tool to be able uh, to score the output that is generated at any node. Of course, uh, the uh, controller can at the end, uh, you know, rank the overall thoughts that were generated and then present the best ones to the user. Several transformations are possible. So, for example, aggregation is one of the popular transformations uh, where you could basically take outputs from multiple nodes and output a single node, right? Uh, so essentially, for example, in sorting, you could take multiple subarrays and then just merging them into a sorted subarray is uh, an is is an aggregation task. Similarly, you could take multiple articles and then try to come up with a summary, and that's basically also an aggregation task. You could also do generation as a, a, a transformation operation, right? And generation basically means from one node you generate multiple outputs. So, for example, given one article, you may output multiple summaries, or given one array, array you might want to just chunk that out into small little split that out into multiple chunks okay let's see you know uh, concretely how does this work so uh, and here i'll basically talk about four different tasks sorting set intersection keyword counting and document merging okay. let's start with sorting and uh, specifically i'll talk about sorting lists with numbers from 0 to 9 and the particular kind of sorting we are going to do is merge-based sorting, um, you know, which is typically done merge sort. You decompose the input into multiple subarrays, sort each individual subarrays uh, uh, individually, and then merge them into a final solution. Here is a graph of operations that one uh, that that you know a prompt engineer needs to provide as part of input to the graph of thought strategy. This is for sorting 64 numbers. There are four different operations that you can see which com comprise this graph of operations, four unique operations, right? Now, so the first step is to basically generate four chunks out of these 64 numbers. So you get like four chunks out here, a chunk one, two, three, four. You give each chunk to a sorting a node, and then this sorting guy basically generates three different outputs, three possible outputs after, after sorting each of these 16 size chunks. Okay. 
Now, the, out of these three, uh, out of these three, which are generated by each of them, you might want to score and choose the best one. So the scoring is done by the score module. K basically keeps the best out of these three. Okay, and then uh, A operation aggregates over them. So this is the best aggregated, you know, uh, chunks of size thirty to each. Now you might want to again, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, aggregate, and then you might want to essentially uh, again you can you could aggregate in three different ways, three possible you know outputs uh, by using different values of temperature and so on with the LLM. You again get those three, and then you choose the best uh, best out of those those three. Now again, uh, what this guy does is to uh, generate and uh, try to refine the outputs. Um, uh, so this generate basically could just be refining the output, uh, 32 sized output that you see here. And this refinement can actually be done again in three possible ways. And you basically choose the best of those three possible ways. Once you do that, you want to aggregate now into a 64 sized array again in three different ways, aggregation operation in three different ways. And then you basically get the final output of 64 sized. You might want to refine it further using the generate step. And then, you know, again, in three different ways, get the best one and output that best one uh, as the final output. Now there can there can be multiple kinds of errors. So the scoring function basically takes care of those errors. It basically you know checks for number of incorrectly sorted consecutive pairs. So you know sorting kind of a scenario. Of course, you know the smaller one should come before the larger one. It also you know ensures that the input and the output have the same number of uh, same counts of digits uh, in that sense. So it also incorporates difference in counts of digits between input and output as errors. Okay. Um, now, to be able to um, you know, make sure that this graph of operations works in a nice manner, the prompt engineer also needs to supply prompts for each of those four different steps, like generation. So, for example, splitting the list of 64 numbers into four into four different chunks, or sorting a list, you know, or aggregating two lists, or keeping the best out of multiple, uh, you know, three different chunks or two different chunks and so, three different or two different outputs and so on, improving upon a list and so on. So that's how you can do sorting using the graph of thought strategy. Now, how do you do set inter intersection? Well, uh, a simple way of doing set intersection using a graph is as follows. You basically have two sets. You split the second input set into subsets. Then you intersect those subsets with the first input set. And lastly, you aggregate all the outputs. Now, again, you know, you would require some sort of a scoring function and the scoring function should incorporate these three different errors, number of missing elements in the intersection, and third, second, number of incorrectly included elements, and third is number of duplicates. Ideally, a set should be a set. It should not have duplicates, but if they are duplicates, you should count them as errors, okay? Yet another task that, you know, the authors show as part of, uh, of, of implementing their graph of thought strategy is keyword counting. So given a very large paragraph, the way to do keyword counting is to split it into multiple passages. Second step, you know, count the keywords in each passage. And the third is, of course, aggregate the sub results. Okay. So the possible errors which the scoring function should take care of in keyword counting is for each keyword, basically just compute the difference between the predicted counts and the actual counts. The fourth task that they try to solve using graph of thoughts is document merging. Here, the idea is that given a new uh, non-disclosure agreement, uh, uh, the idea is to generate a new non-disclosure agreement based on several input ones. So multiple um, uh, agreements exist, and uh, you know they partially overlap in terms of their contents. And what you want to do is to merge them so as to essentially do two things: reduce redundancy and maximize the information retention. So again, you know, to be able to score this stuff, this is very, very subjective in nature, and therefore this reduction in redundancy and maximization of information retention is actually measured using a large language model. So how does graph of thoughts perform compared to other strategies? Uh, well, you, uh, you know, uh, essentially first there's a theoretical comparison in terms of uh, these two parameters called as latency and volume with chain of thought strategy, self-consistency with chain of thought and tree of thoughts. As you can imagine, you know, in chain of thoughts, if there are n nodes in the entire uh, graph, so to say, or a chain, right? I mean, the final output node depends on each of those uh, uh, individual uh, nodes, right? And therefore, the latency is n. Um, so the volume is defined as uh, you know the 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 overall number of nodes that the final output depends on. So overall number of nodes, yeah, you know, it's just it's it's all all nodes, right? Because it's in a chain, okay. Now, in cell consistency with the chain of thoughts, there are multiple parallel chains, and therefore the latency is n by k because they are k parallel chains, and also the volume is n by k because you choose one of those uh, one of those k different chains. Right? In tree of thoughts, uh, of course, things are logarithmic in nature, so the latency is log uh, log of n to the base k, where k is the you know branching factor in that sense in the tree. 
Um, however, the volume is also, uh, you know, uh, in the order of log of n, right? So, so remember the latency, smaller the better, volume higher the better, right? Because you would want your final output to be really conditional on all possible uh, thoughts the LLM had in their reasoning process. Okay. Graph of thoughts basically helps you do that. It achieves a significant small amount of latency with very high volume. Okay. Now, you know, there are also these two, three plots that you see here. This plot on the bottom left is for the sorting problem. They used chat GPT 3.5 so as to be able to, you know, evaluate uh, different methods. So input output method, chain of thought, uh, consistent uh, chain of thought method, tree of thoughts, tree of, uh, and, you know, graph of thoughts and so on. Okay. On the y-axis, you basically see uh, the number of incorrectly sorted elements and, uh, you know, of course, lower the better. You also see this colored th stuff and the colored stuff basically is about the total cost, lower the better. There are three subplots. One of them is for sorting 32 elements, is for 64 elements and 128 elements. So as you go to the right side, of course, the complexity of the task increases. So, you know, let's look at the uh, 128 elements one because the, that's the most fancy one. So what you observe is that broadly, you know, graph of thought basically leads you to a very, very uh, small average error rate, right? However, if you notice, uh, you know, a uh, tree of thoughts, uh, um, chain, uh, you know, from a self consistency perspective or the standard tree of thought, you observe uh, that the error rate is 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 pretty high, right? It's pretty high. Uh, and, you know, uh, as you can see in the curve that I just drew, uh, the red curve that I just drew, uh, you know, I'm just trying to compare uh, to to connect the means of the errors. You would observe uh, that with input output, of course, the error is very high when you try to sort using ChatGPT 3.5 a list of 128 elements. Right, the error is the minimum with graph of thoughts. Um, also, you know, uh, the, the blue curve, as I mentioned, is the total cost, and as you can see, the total cost of graph of thought is lower compared to let's say tree of thought in that census. And the same holds even for 64 elements and 32 elements. 64 elements also, if you basically just try to figure out uh, the average error rates and you try to just uh, connect them, you observe that the lowest error rate is basically using graph of thought. Now, similar kind of trends hold even for other tasks. Like, for example, this is for the task of keyword counting, and this plot on the right side is for the task of document merging. Right? And as you can observe, the graph of thought basically leads to uh, minimum errors in keyword counting and the best information retention and uh, redundancy reduction score. Uh, you know, one of the best uh, scores in that sense is uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to graph of thought. Uh, when it comes to document merging, right? So net-net graph of thought uh, improves upon chain of thought and tree of thought by, by about 70% or 62% respectively for the sorting task, while reducing costs by 31% over tree of thought. So you know, for sorting task, as you can see, compared to tree of thought, the costs are significantly reduced in each of those three situations. Okay. So in summary, graph of thoughts basically uses graphs to represent large language modeling, large language model reasoning process where the thoughts are vertices and edges basically represent dependencies between those thoughts. Uh, you know, they experiment with three different transformations, aggregation, generation, and refinement. But of course, this, the, 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 you know, the proposal or the framework is very extensible. You can bring in more transformations. Um, you know, uh, the paper shows that the graph of thought strategy outperforms the tree of thought and the chain of thought strategy while reducing costs. Hope you liked the video. That's it. Thank you for watching. Connect with me on my LinkedIn or look at my research on my homepage. Thank you.